It's called the Inertia, and it's the first production electric motorcycle to be sold in the United States in a brick and mortar store. It's made by Bramo in Ashland, Oregon, and it's been in the works for two and a half years. The inertia can do uh, 55 miles an hour. You can go for 45 miles, and it takes about four hours to charge. When you first started on this bike, what were you trying to go for conceptually? Who's the market? The concept of the inertia is um, really something that should be easy to use and, uh, for new motorcyclists, but also something that's thrilling for those who are very experienced. The design of the motorcycle is an homage to the past, but uh, looking forward to the future. So you say that this is a tribute to the past, but I don't see that. So if you could explain that to me. It's subtle, but we're inspired by the past is with the simplicity of the bike. We've removed a lot of the intimidation, and that's the goal through the simplicity and the lightweight. If you look at the styling elements, you'll think dual sport or supermoto when you first see the bike. It's really designed around uh, being a motorcycle for the commuter in the urban environment. There's no clutch lever or shifter. The frame of the bike extends from the head tube down to the motor and it serves as a battery tray. The batteries actually sit inside the frame and the bike is designed around the batteries and motor. The motor sits down low to maintain a low center of gravity and it's direct drive to the wheel. To turn on the bike, you start with the key, then the power on button. Your dash will come up, but the bike isn't live at this point. It's not drivable until you hit the throttle on-off switch. The dash has a lot of information on it that the rider can use as feedback. You first got the battery level. This will drop down as you go through the discharge. This will tell you how many miles uh, you've traveled and how many miles uh, you have remaining. And it's a live update, so it calculates this number based on the power consumption. How much of the individual components of this bike were designed in-house? Where are they manufactured? You're an American company, clearly. How American is this? Most of the bike is designed in-house. The frame of the bike, the body panels, the instrument cluster, the battery charger, and the vehicle control unit. But components like the motor and motor controller, we've gone to some really high-end companies in Europe. Forks come from Marzocchi, brakes from Brembo. Our ignition system comes from Zotti, also an Italian company. And the frames themselves are manufactured in uh, Portland, Oregon, by a company called Sapa, and they produce a lot of the world's high-end mountain bike frames. The swing arm itself is made in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by one of the suppliers to Harley and Buell. This bike is being sold exclusively at Best Buy. Why Best Buy? When we first uh, saw the bike with all of its components, kind of the black box, the, you know, all the green boards, all the processors laying out on the floor and just the wheels and tires, we realized what we really had was consumer electronics you ride. And so when we started thinking about distribution, we thought, would this get lost in with all the regular motorcycles in a traditional motorcycle store? Or does it need a new way of selling it? The price on this is eleven nine ninety five, dollars which some people will find steep, but there are some pretty decent incentives right now. Can you tell me why is it priced the way that it is and will the price come down? The cost of the batteries is the predominant cost of the bike. So when the cost of batteries come down, so will the cost of the bike. I spent a half day with the Inertia and here's what I thought. It's probably the best e-bike I've ridden. I found its overall handling was on par with similar products from the Japanese or Italians, and I think Bramo has the goods. I just hope enough people agree and literally put their money where their mouth is, because I'd like to see Bramo stick around. For the Los Angeles Times, I'm Susan Carpenter.